Hey Google, what's the date? It is Wednesday, the 1st of January, 2020. It's New Year's, which means it's the arbitrary day where we watch a ball drop and kiss random strangers when the clock strikes 12. Now, I've never been the holiday's biggest fan. I've always found it weirdly overrated, but year after year, I've always made it a point to make some resolutions. In the past, I've always made surface level resolutions, such as to lose weight or to glow up. But this year, I really wanted to create a resolution that I could at first hold myself accountable to, but also take pride in. And that's how I landed on extemporaneous speaking. Now, for those unfamiliar, extemporaneous speaking is a form of public speaking where you're given a question on current events, usually on domestic slash international politics or economics. And you're given 30 minutes to prepare for a seven minute speech. Now I'm only 17, but I'm already pretty old to be participating in extemporaneous speak for the first time. Most of my competitors have been competing since their freshman year at the very least. Therefore, you can probably assume that my limited experience has led me to do not so hot <laughs> in the competitions. I actually placed second to last in one. However, I really do enjoy participating in these competitions. So in this video, you'll hopefully be able to see my progression as I practice towards my end goal, which is my meet, which is in around 30 days. Now, I have no idea how this is gonna go, but fingers crossed this is gonna go well and I actually have some content to make. All right, happy new year and let's get going. <laughs> Today is day one. And for the first day, I wanted to address something really fundamental to speech, and that's actually writing your speech. Now, in extemporaneous speaking, you don't have time to write a thorough speech nor actually be able to absorb it within the time frame that you're given, but it's nice to have a certain structured outline. Now for me, I've been pretty much going into my competitions blind, and that's probably not the best plan of action for anybody for that matter. But I thought if I could absorb a basic structure or outline of what a speech needs and should contain, then it would save me a lot of time during my actual prep. Therefore, I've already gone ahead and watched some videos of people competing at nationals and read up some online articles about the structure of an extemp speech. I was hella extra and wrote the structure down in my notebook, but of course, I'll link the document that I referred to in the description below. It's pretty similar to the structure of an actual like high school essay. There's an intro, there's a body, and there's a conclusion, but there were some things that I was missing that I think I can learn from now. So first in your intro, you want to start right away with a hook. And if you've ever written an essay, you know what it is. It's just something that is super attention grabbing and can interest and pique your viewer slash judge's interest right away. A hook can be many things. It can be a um, theatrical or cinematic reference. It can be an interesting statistic, a metaphor, anything that you can tie and relate to the topic or question that you get is really helpful. So one of the examples I noted was in Connor Rothschild. Oh my god, I probably mispronounce it, but he went to nationals and his question was pertaining to the Iraq war and he used a Spongebob episode where they went and destroyed the whole city and claimed that they saved the day to apply it to the US approach in the Iraq war. And I thought that was super charming and super captivating to the audience. Once you have your hook, you want to link it back to your topic or your subject matter at hand. So in the case of Connor Rothschild, um, after he explained this episode of Spongebob, he said something along the lines of, this is exactly the US approach to the Iraq war. And yeah, this just explains why the heck you just went on this like rampage explanation on Spongebob Squarepants. After you have your hook and you link your hook to your topic, you want to you want to explain the significance and then after you explain the significance you want to repeat your question word for word after you repeat your question you just answer and you name your three areas of analysis or the three points that you'll be addressing in your body paragraphs so in the body paragraphs it gets pretty damn similar to how a lang essay is structured and so you have three body paragraphs with three different areas of analysis. Each body paragraph will have um, a generalization and then two documents or evidence each. So you want to repeat that process three times. 
Um, after you have your body paragraphs, you have your conclusion. And in your conclusion, I've seen that people restate their question and restate their answer and also summarize each area of analysis. And finally, they try to link back their conclusion to their original hook slash AGD. I actually got a comment from one of my judges at first and he said that this nicely tied everything together and was able to bookend the speeches, which I really agree with. I think it's a really good cutesy way to end your speech and also signifies to your judge that this is the end. I'll get a question right now and actually try to use this outline or structure to that question and I'll be right back. Also, this is the website that I found to get practice questions from. It's speechgeek.com and they just post a bunch of questions both pertaining to um, domestic and international events. And yeah, they also have a section for strategy pieces and it just shows you how to approach different types of questions. And I've just been reading like the crap out of this entire website. For the sake of time, I've don't only done an outline for my intro and my body paragraph, but you can really see like what I've got on there. It's not very thorough and some of the stats are a bit off, but you know, I just wanted to give you an image of how I've been trying to implement this outline. So at first I just write down my question, which is, um, does the US need another war on poverty? And then after that, I write down my AGD or my hook. And for this one, I decided to talk about um, Taylor Swift's bad blood and how band-aids don't fix bullet holes is something that the US should learn in their war for poverty. And for the significance, I talked about some statistics on poverty. And after that, I tried down my response to the question, which is, yeah, the US does need another war on poverty. And then I just write my three areas of analysis down. And for my body paragraph, I just wrote down like my, for my body paragraph, I wrote down the area of analysis I would be addressing and then the generalizations and then accompanying statistics that I would say in the speech for it. So the outline is pretty simple and straightforward and but it still helps me I think like guide me along and then figure out what I was missing or keep me in check during my prep time. I think day one was a success. I'll definitely be implementing this outline more so as practice goes on I might show you how these outlines have probably gotten better but yeah I'll see you in my next practice session. So it's 4 a.m. and I'm doing my art assignment because the quarter is about to end and I procrastinated. Um, it's this little baby right here. But um, while I do my art homework, I try to like multitask by watching Crash Course or like instructional videos in Calc. To incorporate this um, with Xtemp, um, recently I've been trying to listen to podcasts. Some that I've been listening to are The Daily by NYT, um, Today Explained by Vox, um, the other one's the one from The Economist. I can't remember what it is. So listening to podcasts is really convenient. It also helps because you can hear people actually discuss the subject matter and you can like implement the tone of voice or just how they present it into your speeches itself. One thing I think people hardly ever really do is to record their speeches and actually look back at them. Doing this, I think, allows you to look at your flaws and mistakes more critically and more clearly as things show up. And this leads me to my next point, which is body language. When I'm reciting my speech, I feel like I'm so caught up within my own thoughts that I have no idea what the rest of my body is doing. And if you've seen my videos, you know that I tend to use my hands a lot. Of course, just standing still is not a good look and you want to move around a little bit. However, if I did this the whole time I spoke, it would be very distracting for the judge. And I feel and I did not realize how much I used my hands until I recorded myself practicing. Luckily for me, my coach made me record one of my first practice sessions and oh boy, you can really tell how comfortable I am just by seeing how I move and sway around and use my hands so excessively. You don't even need to know what the heck I'm talking about. You can already know that I'm insecure and uncomfortable as hell. And to practice this, all I really did was to make note of this mistake. 
I also tried practicing literally standing in a box so I would consciously stand still. After a few speeches, once I got out of the box, my legs were not fidgeting as much, which was great. And as for my hands, like I said, you still want to be able to use them, but you want to use them for emphasis. Honestly, this explanation sucks, but yeah, all I really did do was make note of that. And also I watched a lot of example videos on YouTube of people that went to nationals and saw how they used your hands. And that was also really helpful for me. Here's a clip from one of my most recent practice sessions. Um, you can tell that like, I'm not really shaking. I'm generally in the same spot unless I'm moving to make a point and my hand motions are pretty reserved um, only for emphasis. Hello, um, editing Megan here. Um, I know this is a part about body language, but I also wanted to include a segment about confidence because I do believe that's a pretty integral part of presenting your speech convincingly to your judge. And um, confidence is a pretty hard thing to tangibly gain from like a developed practice regimen. It's not like you can plan out when or how to develop confidence. As corny as it is, it really just does develop naturally and that's coming from someone who was not confident like at all during their first few times doing speech. Um, my advice would be to just continue practicing. I think confidence has something to do with comfortability and just how well you know the material and just how well you know how to compete itself. Because the more familiar you are with the format of extemporaneous speaking, the easier it gets. And of course, the more confident you will be because you are sure of your skills. I definitely saw a spike in my confidence once I knew what the hell I was doing. This is super Pinterest mommy, but just believe in yourself and it takes time, but you'll get there. All right, um, gotta continue editing this now. I'll see you. After I addressed my issues, then came the big day. <laughs> Hello. I just came back from my meet today and oh boy, what a day it's been. I just looked at my results and holy crap, I moved up 14 ranks places because I started off at like 27th from the last meet and now I'm at like 13. And that's so wild to me. Oh my God. I know like placing 13th isn't like the world's like most like exciting or like impressive feat, but just the fact that I started doing this thing like two months ago and I started from like second to last and I'm at like 13th now and I even placed first in one of my rounds. I think there's some improvement to or some drastic improvement to be seen. I've been so excited since I saw my results and yeah, I'm gonna go like take a shower and wipe all of this off. I literally have glitter under my eyes, but feels good. Feels, feels very rewarding. All right, bye. Hello, um, editing Megan back here again because apparently I can't remember to film all of my sections properly. Anyway, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my final thoughts. It's been a, over a week since my competition, so I've had a little time to settle down my excitement and review my comments from my judges. To be honest, over the past 30 days, I didn't practice every day, but just having that small little push really helped me to get out there and just put in the work that I desperately needed for my speech career. Um, I'll definitely do this again. And there are still plenty of things I can still work on, such as my analysis and a little bit of movement here and there. I really hope this inspires you to go out there, make a resolution, and better yourself. That's really cheesy. All right, I'll see you. I really hope you enjoyed this video because this was a beast at it.